Hey everyone, I'm on the Psychoft server, and we don't really record a lot of stuff on the server, uh, apart from Mango's episodes and Ragu's server tours. So today I kind of just have a small scale project. Mango recently built his um, portal pigment farm that we use to get uh, EXP even while the mob switch is on, but we haven't yet connected it to this nether hub over here. So the way we travel to all our farms is we have these piston bolts with all these curved rails and they travel at 20 meters a second, which is two and a half times faster than standard minecarts. But unfortunately, we don't really have any more room on top. Um, we have this silo over here, but uh, we're keeping it for future use. We want to make, make uh, an elevator. Fortunately, we have a bunch of room on the lower floor. Uh, we don't really have any piston bolts here yet. Uh, we have one in that direction, but it's a secret project that I can't reveal yet. So, uh, here I laid the uh, groundwork for the piston bolt already. The uh, portal where we want to go is this one over here. Norwegian already built a, a nice tunnel over here with the help of enemy. He decorated really nicely, but unfortunately we're kind of going to have to break this. Um, so, the way you build these piston bolts is you follow the direction of the minecart. So, this one has to be built in this direction, and uh, the other one over here has to be built in this direction. So the way you do this is um, you just put rails in your offhand, that's the easiest thing, and just place your rails like this. Unfortunately, uh, this one connects in the wrong direction. So because of that, you have to place a bunch of redstone blocks on top. So first you place redstone blocks along all of the line. And then what you do is you just uh, place your rails. So it's, it looks something like this. Oops. This one needs a redstone block too. <laughs> Derp. And then you're good to go. Something like this. So I'm going to do all of the rails and then I'll be back so we can start with the decoration. Okay, the rails are not done. And um, it's time to remove the redstone blocks. I've already removed almost all of them. It's actually important that you remove uh, the rails on the side before you do the redstone blocks, otherwise uh, everything is going to get wrecked and you're going to have to restart. Okay, so now we can start a decoration. Fortunately, I'm not really good at decoration, uh, but the way I want this to look is kind of like the uh, an, a, an XP orb, because this is an XP form after all. Um, so if we need some kind of shades of green, so for the walls we have these shades of green, and for the floor, we need some green blocks, but it also has to be spawn proof, because obviously uh, we don't really have mobs on the server, but it's always good to have it spawn proof. So I'm going to alternate between um, sea lanterns and leaves, so it's still it's spawn proof. And for the roof, <laughs> we're going to do that later, because the roof is actually going to involve a fuck ton of redstone, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll just finish the decoration first, and then we can get started with the roof. All right, so the piston world is now finished, at least the bottom part. Um, I put these enchanting tables on the side for decoration. Even though we don't really enchant anything on the server, we mostly just combine villager books with anvils. But I think they'll look better than anvils. Also put the pistons, so I guess we can try it. Really hope this, this works. Nice. All right, and now the tricky part, the intersection. Yes, all right. I copied the redstone over from a previous piston bolt, so but these things are kind of locational, so I wasn't sure if it would work. This one I already tested, I already know this will work. Yep. So the tricky part with piston bolts is you have to create a one game tick delay between these two, but which is kind of hard, and if you don't create a one game tick delay, then they become extremely locational. So in this one, I don't think we create a one game tick delay. I don't know, just copied the redstone over from this one. Um, okay, so now we can get started with the roof, which is going to be the main part of this episode. So, I want this to look kind of like um, an EXP orb. So if I just put a bunch of EXP orbs on the ground, you can see they alternate between this kind of yellow and green. So, my idea was to make um, some kind of uh, fading green pattern, kind of like this, that then switches to a yellow pattern. 
like this and then swaps back to green and make kind of arrows with this so um Yep, there we go. And then the tricky part with um, EXP is you know how they switch from yellow to uh, green. So this roof isn't just a static roof, it has to move forward in the direction of the arrows. Same thing for the other roof, it has to move in that direction. And moving these roofs is actually not that easy because you don't have gaps. So it's really easy to just move 12 blocks, but obviously you can't move, this is like 100 blocks long, you can't move all of this. So for that, I'm going to hop on creative and show you what I've got. Okay, so here we are in creative. And now we have to find a way to push all these blocks. This could, line could be like 100 blocks long without having any pistons on this level. Because otherwise this would kind of ruin the, the roof if we have these pistons every 12 blocks. Uh, now, the way to do this obviously is to use slime blocks. Solution is always slime blocks. Um, so if you use these slime blocks, then you can have no pistons over here. And the goal is to have this essentially this piston here push. And then while it's extended, have the other piston push and so on and so forth. And the only problem, as you can see, is it retracts the wool with it. So in order to solve this problem, we can actually use block drop to our advantage. So when I extend this piston, if I power it with a um, signal that's less than three game ticks long, then this block will get dropped here before this wool has the chance to come here. And then while it's dropped, then we can push it back with another piston and it won't stick to anything because this wool is not yet here. So this is actually really easy to do because now that we have observers, they, you can easily generate a two game tick pulse. So then you can just do something like this. Uh, let me change it with cactus, okay. And now if I power this, oops, sign block has been in a good position. Okay, something like this, then as you can see, it pushes all these blocks forward and does not grab the wool. And then you can just have another station like this, 12 blocks forward. Uh, so let me just fix this. Okay. Now if we clone it over here, then we can just have one of these every 12 blocks and keep the loop going. So uh, let me just connect these. You have to connect them about two game ticks apart. So you can do that with rails easily. Um, flip it with cactus. Okay. And now, if I power this, then this whole line should move forward, except the blocks that are behind this line block. There we go. So everything got moved forward. You can see this is way more than 12 blocks. Except these ones, and these ones would get pushed by the next station, and so on and so forth. And this, eventually, we get a huge loop that will span our entire roof. Okay, so I finished designing the entire roof. It was actually not that hard, it's just copying the design I showed earlier a billion times. The only thing I had to be wary of is uh, alternating the slime blocks because I don't want them to stick to each other, obviously. Uh, however, there was one big challenge while being on this that I hadn't really considered. So, um, and that's these, um, these uh, sand blocks over there. So the problem with large roofs is that you need a hole. So obviously here, I can't really push this piston, because if I do, then this block is going to become here, and it's out of the loop. So I always need one hole. And the problem with holes is that you need to propagate them through the entire loop before you can push the same piston again. So I had to move the hole from through all of these pistons before I can push this piston once again. And that's acceptable for small loops, but once you go for a 100 long roof, then eh... It's not that good anymore because it takes maybe like two seconds for the hole to propagate through. And then, um, well, obviously, I don't want to move the roof by one block every two seconds. That's just be ugly. Um, so there's a simple solution is just to create way more holes. But again, that's not really something I can do here because if I do that, then there's just holes in the roof everywhere and that's ugly. So fortunately, there is actually a solution. And uh, that's what the send, the send does. So what I do is I do what I said I couldn't do first. So I actually push these blocks out of the loop at first. Uh, something like this. All right, and then now I have a bunch of holes so I can move this loop at very high frequencies. I don't have to wait for the hole to always propagate through the entire loop. 
And then once I want to stop the loop, then what I do is I actually just push these blocks back into the roof, uh, into the loop. Something like this. Now with pistons, it's kind of hard to do, but it turns out it's really easy with sand. So all I have to do, because sand just falls by its own. Uh, so all I have to do is have these block conveyors over here, which are the exact same as these ones, just vertically. And then what happens is that uh, when I start the roof, then this there's gonna this block over here is gonna become here, then it's gonna get pushed upwards, and then this whole sand column is getting pushed upwards. And then once I want to stop it, I just use these conveyors to move it downwards again. So maybe we can see what it looks like. Um, here, so I just put a small button over here, and then it takes maybe like one second to start up, and there we go. So the roof is actually moving at pretty decent frequency. Could maybe increase it a bit more, but then you'd need to get into some zero ticks. I didn't want to go into that. So yep, now it, that it's completely designed, it's time to build it in survival. And I'll see you there. So it's been a few days, as you can see from the Netherrack scoreboard on the right. Uh, and by now the whole piston bolt has been built in survival. But before we go check it out, I have some unfinished business with a pigman. So if we go look down here, there's a pigman over there, and I have no idea how he got there. Um, we have a mob switch, obviously, so he couldn't have spawned while I was building this, and for some reason he doesn't despawn. I actually had to go get a bow just for him, because um, none of us carry bows on the server. We don't really have to. There we go. Um, Alright, so now it's time to go... Check the piston bolt. Okay. So, as you can see, it works just like in creative. Let's wait a few seconds. There we go. It's a bit laggy because um, I think enemies mining at the, sa at the same time, and also the quarry's running. But anyway, you can use the piston bolt. Holy crap, yeah, it's actually really laggy. And there we go. So I also built a tiny room over here with an enchanting table and some kind of library around it. And if we take the portal, we can see it takes us to Mango's uh, new EXP farm. Hopefully once the server stops lagging. And there we go, there it is. Alright, so um, that is going to be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, see you next time.